Across spring, I brought you videos about different plantings in the veggie garden, focusing on individual sections like these carrots here and others. I thought now that spring is almost at an end and we're about to enter summer, I'd bring you a roundup video showing the status of the growth at this stage. And uh, so it'll be a little bit of a tour looking at what's happening right now. So today we're really starting to feel like it's more summer than spring. The temperature today is around about 27 degrees Celsius, which is fairly warm here for the northwest coast of Tasmania. Other parts of Tassie often do get it hotter than we do, but we rarely see temperatures in the upper 20s or 30s. And especially this time of the year, we'd more expect this type of temperature in January or February. The season has been quite good. We have been getting rain, but it is really quickly beginning to dry out. And that means now that one of my biggest emphasis is in keeping the water up to the garden. Where up until about two weeks ago, it's been planting and planting and planting. Now it's about water and water and water, just to keep these young veggies going so that they keep growing because otherwise the ground dries out very quickly and they can really then struggle at that early stage. So let's begin by what's happening here in the raised beds. To my right you'll see these snow peas. Now these are one of the first things that were planted. These were planted back in winter and I forget now exactly which month. I probably do have it somewhere in a video but I'd have to look for that. We've been picking them quite heavily now for probably close to four weeks. And look, you have to pick them every couple of days because they ripen very, very quickly. They can go from just ripe to too mature really fast. And it's nice to get that early food coming along. So they're doing really well. With water, they will flower again and get second and third crops through the summer. On the other side of these, there is some silver beet plants, which I've put in, and they're just starting to get going. They're wilting a bit today in the heat because they're not used to this type of sun, but they're really starting to take off now. This bed here, look, I had silver beet in it. I've pulled that out, and I felt that this bed was a little bit uh, low in nutrition. So I've given it a really heavy dose of the litter from the uh, hen house, and look, I think, I probably won't plant anything more in that until maybe towards winter. I'll let that nourishment break down, let the worms eat that and it'll be ready to grow some uh, leaf crops really because it'll be very high nitrogen initially because of that fresh or well, fairly fresh manure that I've put into it. There is growing in it this kale. This is a perennial kale and it's the first time I've grown it. Some of it I've cut down to see how it goes and how it comes back, but I've let a couple of them go to seed because I'm going to be quite happy to harvest a good crop of seed from that. So the carrots, I spoke about those and I'm really happy with the way they're going. They've come up really well and I put those in, if you go and have a look at that video, I put them in in pinches and I think they're going to do really well and I'm not really going to need to do any thinning on them. The radishes going great. We haven't been eating as many as we should. In our family, I'm probably the main radish eater and it's remembering to come and pick them, but there'll probably be a few of those that go too far before I get to eat them. The beetroot is coming on. Now, one of the things that I really notice here is because I've got this silver beet plant going to seed is that it's overshadowing both carrots and beetroot around it and suppressing their growth and that's always one thing that you will find in a veggie garden if you've got something that's so big it's not only pulling nutrition out of the soil but also creating some shade and it's going to suppress the growth of other vegetables around it. I don't really mind because what it will actually do here is create a little bit of staging that the other carrots at the other end will come first and these will come later and that's a good thing. You don't want them all at once. 
and the same will happen with the beetroot so that bed i'm really happy with now this one is mostly devoted to zucchinis but you'll see i put a few lettuce in there basically because i had a lot from seed that i had planted and they'll be picked out and removed once the zucchinis start to move quite quickly i've only got three zucchinis and look that's more than enough for our family because zucchinis produce so heavily and you don't really want more than that now in these beds you obviously see this one that i've netted it has broccoli growing in it and some lettuce that's incidental underneath i've netted this to keep the cabbage butterfly off the broccoli i've used this method many times before find it really successful this is a crop protection net generally readily available from hardware stores or online and using some pvc hoops to keep it in place and that's really coming on well it will be harvested soon and then that bed will change over to something else the lettuce i might let some of that go to seed this is the bed that i actually planted the lettuce seed in initially but i took a lot of the plants out of here and put them into other beds now this bed here to my right has only some of these lettuce going to seed which have been blown around by the wind that we had i should have had them staked because it's one of the problems that when things are going to seed and get up high and the wind comes through you can actually lose it so i won't get as much seed off that as i perhaps expected the leeks will go in there that's one of the last things i plant it's going to happen probably within about two weeks now that I put leeks into this bed. On my left, the onions are really starting to move, particularly up this end, which is growing well. Again, in this far corner here, they were overshadowed by uh, some kale that was there that's now been taken out. I've got the frame in for the climbing beans and they're in the ground. They just haven't come through yet. I'm expecting them to come through within the next few days. And with this heat, they'll just take off. Now, this kale, I spoke about this earlier because I had planted it in autumn as small plants and it grew over winter and I was hoping that it wouldn't go to seed. But as you can see, it's been bolting. It very quickly with the rise in temperatures came up and wanted to bolt. Now, you can take that in one of two ways. One way is that you could actually let it go up to seed and harvest a lot of seed. I still want to get a fair bit of leaf from it. So what I'm actually doing is picking these heads off. Now you can use them for cooking. They're basically just like broccoli. And so you throw them into a stir fry, steam them, however you like them, even in a salad, fresh, they're fine. And so by continually taking the uh, flower heads and seed heads off, you're actually keeping the plant down and making it branch more and continue to produce leaf. It wouldn't hurt to let some of this go to seed though, because if you get a lot of uh, kale seed, it's useful for microgreens, you know, sprouting that type of thing. So not a bad thing to have. On the far side of this, there is spinach which is now heading up to seed again i will collect some seed from that i've also put some more spring onions in there just to follow on they're a little bit overshadowed by this kale so it's keeping them a little bit slower in this section we've got young corn that's coming up here in front of me uh, elizabeth and the children planted this around about three weeks ago now and the majority of it has come through. There's only been a couple of failures where the dog came in and did a little bit of digging, but not too much of a problem. Behind me, the tomatoes are really taking off. They were put in at the same time. Uh, they had been uh, in pots in the greenhouse. They were put out and they really haven't looked back. Putting them out at the time of the year where it's warming up and particularly this month, which has been much better than last year where last year we put them out at the beginning of november and the month of november was really cool this year it's been nice and warm and so they've just taken off there's some in flower now 
and I think they're going to do really, really well. Now, I thought we'd pop into the berry house as we we're going by because some of you may recall that over winter I completely redid the planting in here and some new beams and so on. The strawberries are really doing fantastic. Now, there were probably one, two, I think about three plants that didn't survive. And so there are little bits of gaps, but most of them are looking great. And there's even some ripe strawberries there now. Lots of flowers, lots of more strawberries coming, and it's really set to go. So we'll be eating strawberries from now uh, for the next uh, six weeks or so. They should be producing quite well. And these generally come back with a second crop a little bit later too. The raspberries are growing fantastic. Now there won't be very many on there this year because they were new canes that were planted in there. But there's a lot of new growth that's going to be next year's crop. So I'm really happy with the way all this berry house is looking. Now, while most things have been successful, there has been one significant failure. If you recall, I planted chickpeas in this patch and within a few days we had rain, but it wasn't just rain, it was very heavy rain and quite a lot of it. And so it was very, very wet for a couple of weeks. I only had about six chickpea plants germinate in this patch. So it was really a failure. Because of that, I decided to have another go. I cleaned it out again because I had a lot of weeds coming up and replanted it with chickpeas for a second time. Now, I'm still waiting for those to come through. I'm hopeful that that's going to work and we're going to get still a crop of chickpeas out of this. But sometimes you've got that opportunity. I felt that still there was enough window of time to replant and have another go. But other times, you know, you, you've lost too much time and you wouldn't be able to do that. Still, it's a question whether this is going to work. But on the other side here, I did plant the red kidney beans, as I spoke of. The children and I put these in and most of these have come up. There's been a, a couple of gaps in this corner, but the majority have come up really well. And I'm hopeful that this is going to take off they're loving this heat obviously and so far they're looking really great in terms of potatoes i have this early crop which was planted in august and it's now doing really well coming into flower main thing with this now is keeping enough water up to it but it looks on track to yield a crop somewhere in december and then on my left, the summer crop, which, well, later spring crop, whatever you'd like to call it, which is only just coming through the ground now. As it grows up, I will hill it with these mounds. The, the potatoes are actually in the furrows at this point. And then I will probably mulch it again with straw after I've hilled it. They will move along very quickly now. They're just coming through. So within a couple of weeks, they'll be up so high and I'll peel it and mulch it. Coming into the greenhouse here, you can really feel the heat with a hot day like this. Even though the doors are open at both ends and the wind can come straight through, it's still retaining lots and lots of heat. This new bed that I built over winter is looking really good. I've got three of the Gardener's Delight cherry tomatoes coming on there and they are really starting to move fast. Amongst them I've planted some basil as well as the parsley plants that I put along the front when I did the bed. The basil helps reduce the white fly in the tomatoes uh, which sometimes is a problem growing in a greenhouse where the air is more still. But you can see I'm watering at the moment and in here it's really necessary to actually keep that water up because with this heat plants dry out really fast. On my right there's the mix of parsley, lettuce and spinach, uh, some fennel too, all going up to seed and I'm going to let most of this go to seed before I do anything with this bed now. This one 
has the capsicums in it and I also put some lettuce in it. Uh, that was from the seed that I had planted outside and you can see how fast it's growing in this heat. It's absolutely crazy. Now it's going to want to bolt up if I don't cut these very quickly. They're really all ready to use. One interesting thing is that I planted two types of seed. I planted Simpsons and Australian Yellow and I transplanted both of them into this bed. Now I can't tell the difference now that they're growing between one and the other. They look absolutely identical to my eye. They taste the same. I can't see any difference between them. So an interesting reference. I don't know if that's supposed to be the case. I know they're supposed to be close but I can't see that they're not identical. The broccoli here which was a fantastic crop really nice and big has finished and what I'm doing now is progressively taking those leaves off and feeding them to the hens and within a couple of days that'll be finished and I'll pull those out. I'm not totally sure what I'll plant in here yet. I was thinking about actually putting a few more cucumbers. I've got the plants that I could put in here and let some cucumbers run over this bed. The jalapeno is coming back nicely. Uh, I just trimmed it off and it's coming into flower so it'll set some fruit really quickly. Samuel wanted to grow some watermelons so we put more of the cool climate watermelon seeds into this bed. There's also a lot of tomato seed coming up but that needs to be scratched out. I don't really find that the watermelons are that successful here in Tasmania simply because they are so late in terms of their the time which they come to harvest but we'll have another go and in the greenhouse here with the heat they may come a bit better we can just see if we can do better than last time now in this bed i planted cucumber seed and there is tomatoes trying to volunteer but i keep scratching those out and there are more cucumbers in here that i actually want to grow in this bed they've been a little bit slow getting started and i think that's because this bed has a lot of shade doesn't get direct sunlight so I will take as I said some of these I think and move up to where the broccoli is coming out it was probably a mistake to put those in a bed like this that received so much shade because they wanted more heat earlier to get started but I think now they'll take off and do fine feels good to get out of that heat it's much cooler out here than inside it's just a bit too hot in there the garlic has been going really well. This first row is all uh, a purple garlic, which is going to be ready to start coming out of the ground in around about oh, two weeks time. I will take these out. The elephant garlic at the back will stay until the end of December. But look, there's a little bit of yellow dieback on the ends of the leaves that may be a rust i'm not certain but mostly it has done fairly well it has been kept fairly damp because of this mulch but it appears that the bulb size on these is going to be pretty good by the size of the stem judging on that i think it's going to still be quite a good crop under this net are the cabbages that i planted now i was a little bit late getting this net on I probably should have done it at least two weeks earlier. Sometimes you don't see the cabbage butterfly around, but they are. And I did get some caterpillars in here. So there's some holes in these leaves. I sprayed it with some Dipol, the bacteria, to try and kill those caterpillars off and have netted it up. And hopefully that will control it and allow these cabbages to develop good hearts. Behind me, the broad beans are really firing away and really running up and setting lots of beans now. Nothing picking there yet, but really growing well. It is worth mentioning that this net is not a crop protection net, but only a five millimeter bird net. Now I have used this previously for the cabbage butterfly and have found it successfully. The five millimeter hole size seems to be sufficient it can be a bit of a problem if you've got contact like i do have in some spots here where they can land on it but to some degree i find that the white nature of this acts as a little bit of a deterrent that they somehow don't like that 
and do stay away from it to some degree. I mention that because these tree nets or five millimeter tree nets are quite a bit cheaper than a crop protection net. The crop protection net has a lot smaller hole size uh, and obviously would keep things away that were a lot smaller than this would but for the cabbage butterfly this appears to be adequate at least in my experience. So to finish up I thought we'd come down here to the pumpkin and bean patch which is the last project that I actually filmed for YouTube and that was about two weeks ago. Now most of these mounds have the pumpkins germinated uh, at least one pumpkin on every one most of them with the three seeds have come through but at the very least there has been at least one germination per mound and that's all I need because I'll have to come through and thin the others out because I only want to grow one vine per mound so I'm really quite happy with the germination but I do see that there is weed germination around those pumpkin seeds so my plan of putting the green waste compost on top of my own compost to actually suppress weed growth didn't really work the weeds germinated quite well through that green waste compost but the good thing is that the straw around it is suppressing the weeds so I'll simply have to come and do that little bit of weeding around the individual plants and then I can actually bring the straw in closer once they start to grow. So I think the pumpkins are going to do really well. With the scarlet runner beans, they have been coming through progressively over the last few days. And look, I think there's about at least a third to a half of the seed now has actually come through and I expect there'll be more of it uh, over the next few days and it should complete its germination looking quite good at this stage and so it's really going to be interesting to see how that grows so that's the roundup of what's happening in the veggie garden and showing you really how things have developed from some of those videos that I did earlier in the spring hope you've enjoyed that I'll probably be back soon with an update of what's happening in the flower garden because Things are looking really great there and Elizabeth has done a little more planting but basically it's really looking beautiful and I'm sure you'll be happy to see it.